Well, I think that's the last of it. Uh, Mom, you can put that in the kitchen. Dad, you can drop that anywhere. <laughs> Pretty great, huh? My new home and the Big Apple. Man, I, I, I really appreciate you guys helping me move. You know, at a pivotal point like this in one's life, family is so important. David, this is the first time we've heard from you in three months. <laughs> I was actually very surprised when you called. I mean, it's really so... All right, all right, I used you for your station wagon. <laughs> hey, you know, we did get to spend some quality time while we were waiting at the toll booth. I don't consider feeling around on the floor for your father's lost token quality time. <laughs> well, hey, you found a marble. <laughs> David, do you realize what you're throwing away? A full professorship at Trenton State. Okay, it's not Princeton, but how many people have the chops to teach there? You mean besides you and Mom? We can't help it if we're smart. I told you, I'm sick of teaching about writers. I want to become one right here in the literary mecca. I am tired of living in my ivory tower, looking out of my ivory window as the world passes me by. I want to skip down those ivory stairs. I want to burst out of that ivory door. Can we move on to another metaphor? <laughs> David, I'm a psychologist. Honey, you can't fool me. You're still not over the trauma of your divorce, which could be related to certain unresolved sexual issues with your mother. <sighs> Mom, please don't start with that. But you think it's a coincidence that your ex-wife and I have the same shaped buttocks and thighs? All right, that's it. I'm through. You just take that smut outside. Oh, all right, I give up. Goodbye, honey. never noticed that. <laughs> Bye, son. You'll see. I'm gonna make it all on my own. Son, you're 37 years old. It's not going to be that impressive. <laughs> ah! <laughs> you don't have a cold, do you? Cold? No, I feel fine. Oh, crap. You know where I can catch one? <laughs> Who the hell are you? Oh, I live next door. You see, my rent's past due. In this medical research lab, they're paying volunteers to test their medicines on. But I can't seem to come down with anything. <laughs> you know anybody who has the swine flu? Talk about a payday. You're a human guinea pig? And you are David Preston. Nice to meet you, David Preston. My name's Derek. Derek Clooney. You believe that, don't you? <laughs> if you'll excuse me, job interview. Job? Yeah. Why? So that I can purchase an elaborate system of deadbolts for my door. Good thinking. Keep out the wackos. That's you. Do you hear that? What? A sneeze. Where? Down the hall. Way down the hall. You better hurry before the mucus hits the ground. Well, thanks a lot, man. And if you're ever lonely, I'm right next door. <laughs> I'm David Preston. Yes, I was just reviewing your application. Please, sit down. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> okay. David A. Preston. Hmm? Let's see what we got here. PhD, English Lit, yada, yada, yada. Enjoys tennis. Oh, that must be very nice for you. Age. Oh, hello. 37. Well, why? How old are you? Just turned 26, Tuesday. Yeah, I had a killer party. <laughs> Was there a pony? <laughs> yeah. You, uh, you don't recognize me, do you? Should I? No, I guess you can't be expected to remember every one of your students. Really? That you oh. flunked. Uh-oh. <laughs> well, what a small world. Small, hot, a sweaty little world. David, I'm a professional. I'm not going to let my personal feelings interfere with my job. Thank you. Is that a, a big red F on my application? Oh. Well, I just didn't finish what I was writing. Yeah. For consideration. Uh, look, son. Um, I mean... <laughs> Mr. Green, 
It is my dream to work for Cold Bath Publishing. I mean, Henry Cold Bath is like my Yoda, my, my, my guru, my guy I really look up to. Professor, get real. You're not going to get a job here. You have Zippo experience as a journalist, and you're way too old for any entry-level position. Yeah, well, you got a job here, and you play with toys. These are not toys. They're stress relievers. <laughs> Do it with me. <laughs> See that guy out there? That guy's two years younger than me, and he wants my job. Hey, you bastard. <laughs> Thanks for coming in, Mr. Preston. I'm sorry, there's nothing we can... Wait, 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 wait. Isn't there some place I can go at Cold Bath Publishing to, just to get my foot in the door? I mean, uh, World Issues Magazine, The Tribune? Well, you did give me that D on my Beowulf paper, and that thing sucked. <laughs> I guess I can toss you a bone. Are you familiar with Stuff Magazine? The one that's all pictures? Henry Cold Bath owns that ridiculous fluff rag? Hey, there is nothing wrong with Stuff Magazine. It's gripping the edge of your seat bathroom reading. I'll call the editor, Larry Dunhill, tell him I'm sending you down. No, but you don't understand. I'm a writer, a serious writer. Yeah, well, it looks like you didn't quite make the grade. <laughs> well, my final's not in yet, birthday boy. <laughs> What's interesting about this story is that your dog is in love with a whale. Nobody cares if it's a gray whale or a beluga whale. No, stuff will not print a correction. Fine, go ahead and sue. You know what? That dog here is really sick. Do you hear me? Sick. Excuse me. Is this a Livingston Journalism Award? Yep. You can get one of those working for stuff? Yeah, if you rob Art Buckwald's house. I was working for time when I won it. Harlow! Yeah. You got the facts wrong in the whale piece. It's a beluga whale, not a gray. I didn't get the facts wrong. I got the facts right. Maybe you got the facts wrong. <laughs> Just try and be more careful. I am careful. I'm always careful. Maybe you're the one who's not careful. Maybe you're the one. Uh, hey, I'm just looking for a job. You know what? If people don't start treating me better, I'm gonna rub my armpits on everything in the snack room. Well, someone's mother gave him the bottle instead of the teat. So, are you a photographer? No, I'm a writer. Oh. What are you doing here? Better question is, what are you doing here? You're writing for an audience that can't read People magazine without a tutor. <laughs> Look, real news isn't fun, okay? It's filled with horror, violence, and destruction. After four years working for time, I was taking Prozac for depression, Lorazepam for anxiety, and Zantac for ulcers. I'm washing it all down with this. Since I've been at Stuff, I haven't taken a single pill. And the bourbon? Well, I can see you're a lot of fun. You know, Kelly, Kel, I really haven't been much fun lately. Well, I caught my wife in bed with another guy. Oh, please, I can't handle other people's problems. Uh, she divorced me. I didn't get out of bed for three weeks. My mother had to force feed me chili through a straw. Uh, see, my therapist is out of town. Did you know that my mother has the same buttocks and thighs as my ex-wife? Oh, God. Ah, 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 ah. You don't need the pills, baby. I was going for my pepper spray. Kidder. <laughs> we are gonna have such fun working together. get some new tea cakes. These smell strangely like deodorant. I didn't do it. Somebody else must have done it. There's no crumbs under my arms. I just checked. All right. And my parking space is still too bloody far away. I want the one right next to the elevator. Hey, that's my space. Hi, nice to see you. Uh, Mr. Uh, I'm David Preston. I believe uh, personnel called about me. Oh, yeah, the pro wrestler. Uh, no, that's professor. I'm a writer. Oh, 
God, not another one. I told them, no more bloody scribblers. I need Shutterbug. But, but Mr. Dunhill, I am sure that I can change your mind once you read some of my writing. Now, this may be a tad cerebral, but then again, that's what I can bring to your party. <laughs> A didactic analysis of the metric forms of poet W.B. Yeats. Well, believe it or not, there is some laugh-out-loud stuff in there. <laughs> right. Let's examine something, shall we? What do you see here? Um, my article? Words. Everywhere you look, words. <laughs> hundreds and hundreds of the little buggers. <laughs> Many of them multisyllabic, forming <laughs> compound sentences, expressing complex issues and ideas. Now here, here's a copy of our publication. What do you see? A picture of David Hasselhoff on stilts. Right. And how many words? Uh, move your thumb. None. <laughs> Lovely. Give me a caption. Oh, boy. Um... TV star towers above the ratings competition. Rubbish. <laughs> There's only one caption for that picture, and a crack writer would have gotten it immediately. Sexy Dave sexies up a pair of sex stilts. <laughs> what? Look, kid. You got brains, you got class, you got integrity. I can't help you. But you don't understand. You gotta hire me. I I've already lowered my standards. I'm gonna miss our little talks. <laughs> Go away. Well, I don't give up that easy. This ain't the only place in town. Hiding from the landlord. You still haven't paid your rent. No. I couldn't even get hired for just one single experiment down at the research lab. Apparently, I'm missing a chromosome or something. <laughs> How's it going with you? Lousy. I couldn't even get Stuff Magazine to hire me. I love Stuff. I read that every morning with a cup of coffee while I'm sitting on the can. <laughs> Thank you for that delightful picture. Who am I kidding? I am never going to make it as a writer in this city. I failed at my dream. My life is over. Oh, David. Can I borrow $600? <laughs> no. Hey, can I sell your answering machine? You obviously don't need it. You only got one message. I don't care. <laughs> So I called me Lumpy. I think she wants me back. Maybe she's got $600. I just got a divorce. I know she's got $600. Hi. Hi. Uh, thanks a lot for calling. Uh... Let's just get this out of the way. I feel like I owe you an apology for, um, well, you know, that little thing. Having sex with the graduate student on my riding mower? I'm really sorry. Do you think you could ever forgive me? I'd like to make it up to you, if you'll let me. Uh, well, I'll, I'll think about it. Great. Let's celebrate over lunch. Why not? You know, I hear the risotto here. I already ordered for us. I got our favorite, cheeseless vegetarian pizza and iced tea. But that's your favorite. Right. <laughs> your iced tea. Great. These have lemon in them. Take them back. Lemon? 
What were they thinking? <laughs> it's really good to see you. I missed you too, Marianne. Oh, David. This time it's going to be so wonderful. I can't wait to get you home again. Home? As in New Jersey? Where else? I think this time we'll get married outdoors. We'll get you a nice new suit. I'd like to honeymoon somewhere in the tropics. Oh, I called the college and they said they'd give you your old job back. Also, I think it's time we had a child. I'll be ovulating around the 17th. Whoa, 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 whoa. Put the bulldozer in park. I happen to be a writer. Of course you are. You can have any hobby you want. Hobby? Sure. We'll set up a little area for you in the garage. Right next to the riding mower? One more thing. When you come back, that never happened. Marianne, you can't pretend that that never happened. Just like I can't pretend that I was happy being a college professor. I'm, I'm going to be a writer, full time. But that's silly. No, it's not. And I don't want cheeseless vegetarian pizza. Marianne, you can't take me for granted anymore. I have changed. In what way? I eat cheese now. Fistfuls of it. And I love limits. <laughs> mm. mm. Goodbye, Marianne. <laughs> Professor, you can't go in there. Kelly, can't is just the word can, only with a T. And, and also an apostrophe. Do me a favor. Order me a nameplate and put it on that desk right over there, because in just about three minutes, that's going to be mine. That's my desk. Hi, nice to see you. <laughs> that's right, Mr. Dunhill, I'm back. And this time I'm eating cheese and lemons and living for me. <laughs> And I'm not budging from this office until you, sir, give me a job. This gentleman was just petitioning for a raise in salary, so if you'll kindly... <laughs> Go on. So I was just saying, if I don't get a raise, I'm gonna put saltpeter in the water cooler. <laughs> well, see if I care. I haven't had sex in ten years. Raised in <laughs> I thought I told you there was no job for you here. Well, try this caption on for size. Foxy Queen Elizabeth shakes her sweet, sexy thing in front of Parliament. Yeah. <laughs> That's the Queen Mum, you bloody pervert. <laughs> now get out. Oh, come, come on, Mr. Dunhill. Give me a chance. Surely you remember what it was like to be young and just starting out? Yeah, I imagine you do, too. Now. <laughs> Chico. Well, oh. you know what? It is your loss. Because you people need someone like me around. I mean, you, you don't even know the difference between a, a, a comma and a colon. What? Well, this quote in your magazine. Roseanne says everyone can kiss my fat everything. <laughs> See, you preceded the quote with a colon. But a quotation in apposition or direct object of a verb is always preceded by a comma. God, how did I miss that? The cold bath is cracking down on stuff like this ever since he was sued by Wolfgang Puck. <laughs> what we refer to as the $10 million F. <laughs> yeah, if he'd seen this, he would have had my ass for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like someone needs me around after all. I can manage very well, thank you. Suit yourself. Oops. What? Dangling participle. Yeah. Uh-oh, a double negative. Well, that sure ain't no good. <laughs> OK, OK, you've got a job as a proofer. No, Mr. Dunhill. You see, I have to be a writer. Grammar is just the tip of the iceberg. We'll start out with punctuation, then we'll move on to content. What, with, with my brains and your office equipment? <laughs> we'll make this a top-flight periodical instead of a repository of nonsense and drivel. I like drivel. I love nonsense. Oh. <laughs> We're gonna make a great pair. I will be your wide-eyed cub reporter. And you'll be my boss with the gruff exterior and the heart of gold. 
Because you see, Mr. Dunhill, I have a dream. That one day Stuff Magazine will educate and enlighten the world. Mothers will read stuff to their children at bedtime. People will stop watching silly sitcoms on TV. They'll throw away their VCRs and radios. They'll stop talking to one another. They'll just sit in the corner, catatonically mesmerized by the wit and content of the latest issue of stuff. Oh, I have a dream. <laughs> so I can be a reporter? If I say yes, will you get the hell out of here? Hallelujah! my speech. <laughs> Hi, nice to see you. Way to go, Professor. What the hell was that? What? That little feel you just copped. Oh, I know what the modern workplace is like. I haven't been working here two minutes, and already I'm being sexually harassed. Oh, you wish. You just better watch yourself, Missy. <laughs> um... We're still going to be close, right? Because I, I really value our friendship. I'm on a deadline. <laughs> you might just make it after all.